BTC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 12 Part 4. In this section of the lesson, we're going to create an assembly drawing for the subassembly. Now, one of the things I always like to do is open up the file that I'm going to use in my uh, the object that I'm going to use in my PTC drawing. So in this case here, I will open up the subassembly and then close it. So it's in session. It's the last thing that was opened. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a new drawing and we're going to use the format that we created in the beginning of this lesson. So new drawing. Give it a name as per the book. You can uncheck default template. Empty with format. We're going to use the subassembly. So if you did not open the subassembly, make sure you browse and get it the default model to be correct. We will use the E size, but we're going to use the E size format that we created and saved using the steps in the book. Okay. And nothing's going to show on the screen because we did not use the default template. So right mouse button, general view, click OK, select position for the view. And we will use the front view. Let's apply that and see what it looks like. And right mouse button, unlock the view movement. And I know we use the right view of the model, I mean the front view of the model, but when I'm moving it up in the drawing here, this is the position for the drawing view. And we're going to put that view in and then we're going to project from that view. Now, one of the things you're supposed to do in the book is go to the properties, the drawing properties and make some changes. So we can do that. File, prepare, drawing properties, change. And these are for the drawing, not for the format. We did it also for the format. They are different. So if you follow the steps in the book, there's about five or six of them that you have to do. And we'll just do one and then we'll open up the one. This, when you create this file, you were supposed to save it. So remember to do that. And uh, so let's just go to uh, arrow style. We can click in here and do alphabetical and arrow style. And we want to use filled. Add change, apply. Now, instead of going through the whole set, you can do that when you follow the steps in the book. I'm going to go into my working directory, and I have that DTL file saved already. So click open, and it should have set up all the things that we need, text height, etc., that have been changed. Apply, close. Close. Now, one thing I notice is that it's giving me my drawing here, but it's really not the drawing format that I thought I was going to get. So I'm going to go sheet setup and see if I can find a appropriate one, but because for some reason that one is not coming in with the items that I need on it. So let's see if we're not. There we go. So for some reason, that one did not have the bill of materials on it. And if you want, you can actually, we can do this later, but we can move the bill of materials. I'll zoom up. And we're in the layout mode, maybe the annotation about table and see what happens. And we want to move that up so that it's outside the title block. You can see that it's been filled in, filled in automatically. And if your field here is too small, if you put your cursor up at the very top, you can double click on the column 
and it will give you choices for the size. And in the book, it explains you do have to make some of these different. Um, I think when we first put them in there, that was 0.75. Uh, you have to make it one inch. You're going to have to change a couple of them in here. And again, any of these changes can be made by just putting your cursor over the top to get the whole column table and then double click. And you can change the width of them so that they all fit. And we'll go over and we'll look at the top view. So the first thing we want to do is shut off all the datum features, obviously. Roll in and out. The next thing is, I can't remember what this scale is, but I think it was a different scale than here. So I think we're going to change the drawing scale to one and a half. So click down where it says scale in the lower left corner. And 1.5. Get it a little bit bigger. Now, the other thing you can do is you can click on the uh, top view here, and let's go into no hidden line. Disappeared. There we go. I roll in and out. I can refit, repaint. But we have the top view set already. We'll go back over to our layout, click on the top view, right mouse button, projection view, and we're going to project a view from that called front view, obviously. So what we've got on here is a lot of datum features. And I'm going to turn on my drawing tree here. Click on annotate. And then the datums here. We really want these to be hidden. They're part, they're a portion of the part. They're features of parts. We don't want them on the assembly. So let's just erase them. Nothing else. And we'll do it for the other view also. Let's try doing it just for one. Doesn't give me that choice. So you can put these on a different layer and also turn them off. OK, so we have two views on our drawing. And the next thing we want to do is show some things in here, and that might be the center lines. So let's make sure we have annotate selected as our tab. Show model annotations. We're not going to show dimensions. So we're going to click on the datum here, click on the top view, and click on the front view. No, it's not giving me my, my center lines. I thought it would. There's only one dimension required here. This is kind of interesting. We're turning off our model datums, but I did not want to turn off any capabilities as far as our center lines go. We got some notes which we do not want. We got dimensions that are these are the offset dimensions used to create the part or place the part in the assembly. And for some reason let's just click on axes and see if we can pick on something. There we got one. So it looks like if you hold down your control key, I'm not sure why I was not getting all, the, all of them at one time. But regardless, we can click in here and get the ones that we want. And that should do it. So we're going to keep all of those apply. Cancel it. And if you zoom in, you'll see that you have your axes available now. And uh, you can clean these up. I won't do all of them, but place them as, as you wish. Front view, the same thing. You've got your axes. If you want them extended a little bit, you can do that. All right. So while we're in the front view, let's take a look at that. Let's double click on it. And let's go into the sections. 2D cross sections plus, and we did create a cross section for the sub assembly. So we will apply that and then shut the dialog. And let's zoom in. So we're going to go back to our layout tab and we're going to double click on the section line. And the old menu manager comes up. So What's active right now is the section through the stud. 
And in this case, we can put in fill because the standard says that any round standard item cut cross section perpendicular to its axes, you're allowed to use fill. You don't have to use a specific type of cross hatching. So we're going to click on next. And the next one is the foot down here. And in this case, if we wanted to change the angle, but one of the things I'm going to do is delete a line so that there's only one set of lines. This is the generic sectioning or what is iron, cast iron. This is not cast iron. I understand that, but this is the generic sectioning. And it is at an okay angle. If you wanted to change the angle or the spacing, you can do that. Like so. And we'll go to next, and which is the swivel. And let's go to the spacing here and uh, make it a little closer. Angle seems to be okay. Next, here's when we want to delete a second line, like so. And again, the spacing might want to make it a little bit tighter. Done. You can move your note a little bit if you wish. And you can change the size of things also. Okay, so we have our two views. Let's see what else we want to do over here. So once we've got our views in, we changed our front view to a section. We can add arrows also. If we select the front view, right mouse button, and click on Add Arrows, click on the top view, it'll put the cutting plane arrows in. All right, so the next thing is changing the display. And we can select both views, right mouse button properties. And the only thing you can really change is the display view display because we selected two views. So in this case, we're going to do uh, no hidden, and we are going to do and do no. Let's try this one. No tangencies. And this is going to take a second. If you don't like the way that looks, then you can put it in dimmed and apply. It takes a little while for the regeneration here because the threads were modeled on the stud, which is not normal. Okay, so we have our display state, and we put in our axes already. We changed our sectioning. And we did change the column width to fit everything. So you want to go back, make sure your bill of materials looks good. All right. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the balloons to the drawing. And if you go up and you click on table, create balloons, and then create balloons again, create balloons, create balloons all, and it's going to pop all the balloons on as per what you have in the, in the bill of materials. It's going to be a little bit different in the book because you're going to add a category for the subassembly as one of the items. And we won't do that here. The next thing we want to do is we want to move some of them and put them in good positions, make them attach correctly. So let's zoom in and let's move some down to the front. For, for instance, let's click on the clamp, right mouse button, move view, and move it down here. And then move it to a position that we want. You can change the arrow style if you want. In this case, we can keep it as a standard arrow, but it's possible to change it to any of these items. So, for instance, let's select the ball up here and the arrow style. Let's make that a filled dot. Oh, I was wrong. I'm sorry. That was not. That was the stud that it's pointing to. So let's go back to our single arrow. And 
and let's check down here. Number three. No, that was supposed to be right. So it was just selecting the inside of it. Thought that looked a little odd. So let's click on this again and we can edit the attachment. And what if we pick another edge here instead? And you can see the little menu manager changing the edge reference. Most of these commands are up here also in the dashboard. If you click on format, you'll see that you can actually change a lot of items in here. Color, size, darkness, filled. You can see the filled. So there's, you can add a hyperlink to that. And we'll just move it over. So the other one maybe we want to bring to the front view would be the swivel. That's number two. Right mouse button, move to view. And we might want to change the attachment for that also. And move it around. And let's go back up to this one. So if we really did want to make this one a little bit different, you could edit attachment. Let's see, just click in the middle there. And middle mouse button. Put your cursor over there, arrow style. And let's use the fill dot. And put it like so. So you can clean up the, depending on where you want to put everything. Now this one here isn't a very good place for it either. So let's move that one to the front view. And number five is the double-ended stud. So in reality, that one really should have stayed at the top. And edit the attachment. Let's click over here. So that's a little bit better. One middle mouse button to close that. And let's select the four balloon, move to the front view. And that one would be a good one to have in the front. And we'll move it around and place it. So you're basically cleaning it up, putting in different views, changing the type of arrow. This is new here for 3.0. When you click on it, the arrow style comes up. If you click on format here, you get a lot of different, sorry, you get a lot of different choices. Arrow style is one of them for your drop down menu. This concludes part four.